Hi guys, welcome to Paragon Cars. My name's Tom and today we're going to be looking at this 2018 Audi A3 S-Line. Under the bonnet we have a 1.5 litre engine with 148 horsepower. It's got cylinder on demand technology so when you're on the motorway it'll actually switch off two of its cylinders to conserve fuel. Nothing super interesting under the bonnet, just standard Audi really. Um, headlights, you've got the normal LED headlights. These aren't the Matrix ones, uh, but you can upgrade to them. Colour, if you're interested, is Nano Grey, uh, which is quite a rare colour on these kind of cars. In the front, this one's spec with the virtual cockpit, which is a must for this kind of car, I think. Uh, you've got the metal pedals, heated door mirrors, uh, flat bottom steering wheel, that's an optional extra as well. You've got frameless mirror, which is really nice. And then S-line seats, which are part leather, part cloth, I think. Um, dual zone climate control. And then you have the sat-nav, which goes up and down like that. I think that's really nice. Virtual cockpit is brilliant. You have so many different views with this thing. So you can see your consumption, all that kind of stuff. We'll do more on that later on in the review. And then, because I've got the lights on, it's in nighttime mode, switches to daytime mode during the day. But we're gonna keep the lights on because it looks nice. In terms of rear leg room, um, it's not massive in the back of these, but it's certainly livable even for an adult. Let's see if I get in. Please don't have child lock on. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, let me just get this angle right. You can see I'm five foot 11 and you can see my knees um, still have a bit of room, about an inch of space to go towards the back seats and my feet can move around pretty easily. No rear armrest in these cars, but that's fine because the seats are pretty comfortable. You can adjust the headrests pretty easily. And you have these little grab handles for when someone's driving too quickly. Right, let's have a look at the boot. In terms of boot space, you get 425 litres if you get this adjustable boot floor, um, which I don't actually know how to do, but it basically sits on this if you have it in the upper level and then sits lower down uh, if you have it on the lower level. But plenty for about four suitcases, I think. Um, if you're using bigger suitcases, you'll probably get two of them in and then one smaller one. Right, let's take this for a drive and see what it's like on the road. Right, now we're on the road. We've reset the trip computer so we can see what kind of MPG we're gonna get on the motorway. We're gonna see what this car's like driving around town for a bit and then we're going to see what it's like on the motorway. One thing I have noticed is compared to a Mercedes A-Class um, or a BMW 1 Series, the interior of this car is very, very quiet, like very quiet compared to the A-Class and the 1 Series. This particular car has hill holes, so when I come to a stop, uh, I can just take my foot off the brake and just let the car sit still. It does have start stop, but I don't really like that. So I usually turn it off. Um, it's got dual zone climate control, which is really nice. So people who always get cold can warm themselves up. Having the 148 horsepower engine, this car isn't really, really fast, obviously, uh, but it is, it's all right. It's pokey enough. It'll get you up to 60 miles an hour pretty quickly. I mean, this is a 40 limit and, you know, if I put my foot down, there you go, there's 40. Not that hard to get up to speed, really. We'll see what it's like on the motorway in a minute. Um, but for now, we can just poodle along. We've even got cruise control, so I can put that on. Press the button, simple as that. Cruise control's on, turn it off, just like that. Very, very easy. Since we're seeing what kind of MPG we're gonna try and get, uh, we will have to cycle through the different driving modes, which we can do with the drive select button. So we can just click it. We can go into dynamic, which we'll do for a minute, 
just so we can show you what kind of acceleration you get with this car. Steering does get heavier. Um, it's not super precise, um, but it's all right. You know, you can go over into manual, even if you want, and you've got little paddles you can use and put your foot down. And it's got plenty of poke, this car. It's not, not actually um, as slow as 150 horsepower, which suggests, I think, it feels more like about 190. I guess this car's quite small, um, doesn't weigh that much, so it would be pretty nippy even with a smaller engine. Right, we're coming into national speed limit. We can downshift into third. Put your foot down, and there's 50, 60, and 70. That's the speed limit already. Now we're going to go back into drive. We're going to put the car into efficiency. This will mean the car upshifts um, quite a lot sooner. Uh, the air conditioning then goes into eco mode. The throttle response is more sluggish, I think. I think that's the right word to use. So like if I put my foot halfway down, it won't actually change down a gear now. It will just keep it in gear and accelerate. But by no means is it bad, you know. It doesn't sort of make you go, oh, this is horrible to drive. Uh, it's actually quite nice. And of course, because you've got the virtual cockpit, you can cycle through all the different views. We can see our long-term memory, which I'm going to reset really now. You can see our energy consumption. So that will tell you like if you've got the air conditioning on, or if I put the heated mirrors on now, you'll see it's it's now saying mirror heating, and it's telling you how much fuel you're actually using, which is actually quite handy because um, it just it just reminds you that you know the air conditioning does actually use fuel, and the mirror heating does actually use petrol as well. But if I turn the air conditioning off, you'll see that'll go away, and now our energy consumption is zero. With Audi's virtual cockpit, you get quite a few different views. So you can have the dials small if you want them. Um, you can have the map on the entire screen. So if you are using uh, the map to take you somewhere, it's pretty easy to follow. And it's actually powered by Google Earth. So you get kind of what you would get with Apple CarPlay anyway, with Google Maps. So it is actually useful, unlike other cars. And then see like if you want to connect your phone then you've got your media so you can see what song you're playing through bluetooth and then you've got all your miles per gallon all that kind of stuff now you can see we're coasting downhill so the cars actually come out of gear um, so we're not you know my foot's completely off the throttle we're just coasting down this hill now and that's a really good way of saving fuel actually so you can see our mpg is gone above 42 now might actually go above 50 on this run um, which would be pretty good for a car like this i think in terms of visibility this a3 is actually really good you've got a nice clear view out of the rear view mirror which is frameless so you don't have that like really nasty plastic around the outside you've got nice big wing mirrors so you can see out of them especially when the glass is clean unlike this one um, you've got a nice view out the front. You've got a nice short bonnet. You can see where the edges are. It's very easy to place the car on the road. All right, we're going to put the car into dynamic mode and see what it's like around this roundabout. A bit of twisties. Not expecting anything that good. Um, yep, that's about it. <laughs> 30 miles an hour is about as fast as it wants to go round the corner. It does feel nice though, for a car that's not supposed to be sporty, it, it does actually have quite a nice steering feel and weight to it. It feels quite neutral. Let's see what it's like round this corner. So it does actually have a good amount of grip. It feels quite neutral as well, like it, it won't oversteer when you lift off, but it'll just kind of even itself out, which is quite nice. All right, let's go back into efficiency mode and keep trying to get the best MPG we can get out of this car on 
43 at the moment now. It's a lot better than my Cooper, that's for sure. We're gonna hypermile it back to the dealership now, so I'm gonna stay behind some lorries. And I can expect to see over 50, I think, on the way back. Most of the time you're probably going to be driving at about 70 on the motorway in this car because it is actually so quiet you tend to go a lot faster than you think you're actually going um, but it is nice on a long journey this car is so relaxing for a small hatchback like you could be in an SUV and it'd be louder than this on the inside one of the best things about this Audi A3 is the lack of rattles and squeaks in the interior. I've got a couple of things actually sitting in the car, like I have this GoPro holder here, and even down here, where you'd usually get a ton of rattles from stuff in the door card, you get none. It's one of those cars that's just so well put together, like everything has a really nice feel to it. Like all the buttons make this really satisfying clicking noise, which I really, really like. You can tell they've just put in a lot of time and effort to get this car to just make you relaxed when you sit in it. Not an exciting car to drive by any means, but what it does do is just make you like really, really chill. Okay, we've come off the motorway now. We've managed to do over 50 miles to the gallon, uh, going at 70 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive, even for a small car like this, especially because it's got a petrol motor. Usually you'd only see that number from a diesel. I think that's thanks to the fact that it'll come out of gear like that when you take your foot off the throttle. And because it's got something called cylinder on demand technology, it'll shut off two of its cylinders when it doesn't need them. Okay, now we're gonna talk about finance. This car costs 19,000 pounds at the moment. It's three years old. It's done, how many miles? 38,000 miles. So not a huge amount of miles, but not low mileage by any means. On a personal contract purchase deal, this car would actually come out with a zero deposit, 299 pounds a month. And remember, this is an S-Line A3 with virtual cockpit, hill hold assist, and a number of other specifications. If you enjoyed that review, please subscribe to our channel, give the video a like, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.